Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And moving on to the next example, we gotta find the shortest distance between a line that passes through these two coordinates, 0, 12, and 6, 0, and the point negative 3, negative 2. So another example dealing with the shortest distance between a line and a point, and I've gone through a bunch of examples on the website before this one. So when I'm doing this, I'm assuming you've gone through those because I cover the general steps in those examples in the overview video. So I'm gonna be following the exact same steps. And actually the video before, the example before on the website, we went through something similar where a line's going through two points and we're finding the distance to that point right there. Okay, so from here, what we wanna do, let's actually first draw just a rough diagram, what's happening. So we got zero and 12, which would be like here. We got six and zero, which would be like here. So we have this line, right? And then we have the point negative three, negative two, which would be like negative three, negative two. That would be like down here. Okay, so we gotta find the distance, the shortest distance between this point and this line over here. And the shortest distance would be where this distance line and then this line are at a right angle to each other. They're perpendicular to each other. Okay, so what we first wanna do is find the equation of this line over here. So. First, let's find the slope. So this would be x1, y1. This would be x2, y2. So we'd have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, like that. So we'd have 0 minus 12 over 6 minus 0, which would give us negative 12 over 6, which would give us negative 2. So we have y equals negative 2x plus b. And then notice we're actually given 0 and 12. Remember, the b value is the y-intercept. So it's actually nice. We could just plug in 12 for b. But if you did want to show your work, you could plug in 0 and 12 for y. Then when you solve for b, you'd end up with 12. Or you could plug in uh, 6 for x here and 0 for y. Solve for b, you would get 12 as well. So the equation of this line is y equals negative 2x plus 12, like that. So we gotta find the distance from that line to the point negative three and negative two. Now it just becomes like an example, a bunch of examples that we've gone through where we're given the equation of the line and given the point, right? Sometimes you won't be given this equation. You'll have to find the equation first, but once you have it, then we just go through those same steps that we've done in previous examples. I'm also gonna show you a shorter way to do it as we did in previous videos too, using that formula that we've gone through to make sure we're getting the same answers. So what are the steps here? Well, we gotta find the equation. We have the equation of this line. We gotta find the equation of this line over here. Because once we have the equation of this line, we have the equation of this line, then we could find this point of intersection, and then we could find the distance between that point and this point here. So to find the equation of this line, let's first get the slope of it, which would be the perpendicular slope to this. So let's actually start off with writing the slope of this line, which is negative two. So this is like negative two over one. So what's the perpendicular slope going to be? Well, it's gonna be the reciprocal of that, which would be one over two, and then we change the sign. This is a negative, so that would end up equaling a positive. So the slope of this line here is positive one over two, and then we have a coordinate that it's going through, negative three, negative two. So we got y equals one over two x plus b, like that. So we plug in negative three for y, or sorry, negative two for y, right? And then negative three for x and solve for the b value. So we'd have negative two equals negative three over two plus b. Uh, so we would end up with b equaling 
negative 2 plus 3 over 2. And then this negative 2 is like over 1, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2 to get the lowest common denominator, which is 2. So b would end up equaling uh, negative 4 over 2 plus 3 over 2, right? Which would give us uh, negative 1 over 2, like that. So that's the b value. So the equation of this line is y equals 1 over 2 x minus 1 over 2, right? That b value right there. And now we have the equation of both lines. Now we find the point of intersection between them. So we'd have y equals negative 2x plus 12. We got y equals 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2. Uh, substitution or elimination, I'm going to take this, plug it in for this y. So we'd have 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2 equals negative 2x plus 12 like that. From here, you want to bring all of the x values to one side, and then all the numbers to the other side, like that. 1 over 2 plus 2, it's like 1 over 2 plus 2 over 1, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, so we'd have 1 over 2 plus 4 over 2, which would give us 5 over 2. 1 over 2 plus 2 is like 2.5, 5 over 2 is... 2.5, so this would end up equaling 5 over 2x. Then we'd have 12 plus 1 over 2. Um, it's like 12 over 1, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2. 1 over 2 plus 24 over 2, which would give us 25 over 2. So this here would end up equaling 25 over 2, like that. Now we want to isolate for this x, divide both sides by 5 over 2 to get rid of that 5 over 2. So what would happen is we would have x equals 25 over 2, this fraction, divided by that fraction. Whenever I have fractions within like a larger fraction, I like to rewrite it in this format over here. So from here, uh, 25 over 2 times 2 over 5. Right, flip this fraction, 2's cancel out, 25 over 5, which gives us a nice x value. Whenever I get an integer, I get pretty happy, don't have to deal with fractions. So x equals 5. So this here, this point has an x value of 5. And then the, uh, the y value, we could plug it in here, plug it in here. I feel like here it's easier to work with. So we'd end up with that, negative 10 plus 12, which would give us 2. So we'd end up with a y value of 2 over here. And notice how this point, when you draw it on a diagram, especially if you're, this is not to scale, but if you draw it on like graph paper, everything you're working with, and you draw everything to scale, then this point that you get should make sense on your graph. That's to scale. Now, if you make a rough drawing, I've shown in previous examples, sometimes this point you get might not make sense with your diagram. That's kind of the disadvantages of not drawing stuff to scale. The advantage of drawing or of drawing stuff not to scale is you could draw quickly. You don't have to worry about making everything too precise. But the disadvantage is that sometimes it's hard to, uh, when you get these kind of parameters in your steps, it's hard to fully check them. Okay, so according to this diagram, this point 5 and 2 makes sense. And now what's left to do is, um, is just find the distance between this point and that point. So for that, we use the length formula. So we'd have uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. So just be careful with your negatives and stuff here. So we'd have, uh, you know what, I'll put a square bracket and then we'll have x2, which is uh, 5 
minus x1, which is negative 3. Be careful here. All that's going to be squared. Put another square bracket, y2, which is 2, minus y1, which is negative 2. All that's going to be squared like that. Then from here, we would end up with 5 minus negative 3 is like 5 plus 3, which would give us 8. And then uh, 2 minus negative 2 is like 2 plus 2, which would give us 4. And that's going to be squared. So we'd have the square root of 64 plus 16, which would give us the square root of 80. So the square root of 80 ends up equaling, that's the answer. That's what the shortest distance is. Okay, you could also get the decimal format of that if you want as well. Uh, most textbooks, they're probably going to show this. And in fact, square root of 80, you can actually simplify that further. So you got to be careful here because this square root of 80, it actually breaks down into, uh, let's do this in steps. It breaks down into 16 times five. One of the factors is a rootable number. Meaning when I say rootable number, meaning when you take the square root of 16, it gives you four, it gives you an integer. And so whenever you're multiplying two things like this, you could split it up like that. That's a rule. So we could split this up into root 16 times root five. And then from here, root 16 would give you four and then root five, you can't simplify that any further. So that ends up, uh, the textbooks may show this solution as well. Four root five, root 80, if you plug both of those into your calculator, you'll get the same decimals. Okay, so sometimes if you get to here and the solution shows this, you may think you got it wrong, but make sure you're checking, make sure that it's the same decimals and your teacher may require you, depending on your teacher, to go from here to here. Usually, uh, simplifying radicals is done in grade 11 for most students, but maybe in grade 10, you might have to do that as well. All right, and I have a bunch of videos on simplifying radicals. If you want more practice with this, with dealing with radicals or like nth radicals, like third roots and stuff, simplifying those, just give me a shout and I could point you to those videos. Okay, so if you see this in your textbook, that's how they went from here to there. So root 80 or 4 root 5, um, that's the shortest distance. Those are the solutions. Now, let's check our solutions with that formula that we've discussed in previous examples. If we have a line in standard form, the shortest distance between that line and to this point would be the formula of the absolute value. Remember the absolute value just takes any negative in the bracket, changes it to a positive, takes any positive and keeps it as a positive. It's just gonna be that over the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so this line here is this line that we're working with and then we got negative three, negative two. So the parameters here would be, let me erase this. We know the m value is negative three, the n value is negative two, and then this line here, y equals negative two x plus 12, it's actually nice, no fractions to deal with. So what you wanna do is, uh, usually in standard form actually, the um, it doesn't matter in this case because of this absolute value. Actually, this is a nice kind of opportunity to show you this. Now, usually with standard form, there are no fractions and then the coefficient in front of the x should be positive. So in this case, we wanna bring everything to the left side. So we'd have two x plus y minus 12 equals zero. So from here, the a value is two, the b value is one, and then the c value is negative 12. And actually, because we're using this formula here and this is an absolute value, this doesn't necessarily have to be positive. You could have actually kept everything on the right side 
and brought the y over, even though that's not proper standard form, this would work too because it's gonna ensure that this number in the numerator is the same, this absolute value will. So whether you use an a value of two, b value of one, c value of negative 12 from here, or we use an a value of uh, negative two, a b value of negative one, and a c value of positive 12, you're gonna get, end up getting the same thing because any negatives here, the absolute value is gonna change it to a positive. Okay, but I'm gonna use this over here. So what would end up happening is we'd have an a value of two times an m value of negative three plus a b value of one times an n value of negative two, and then we got minus 12, all over the square root of a to the power two, which is uh, two to the power two, plus b to the power two, which is one to the power of two, like that. So what we would end up getting here is the absolute value of negative six, one times negative two is negative two, and then we have negative 12 all over the square root of two to the power two, which is four, plus one to the power two, which is one, like that. So this would be negative six minus two, which is negative eight, minus 12, which is uh, negative 20 over root five, like that. So we'd have the absolute value of negative 20. And the absolute value of that would end up equaling positive 20, right? Any negative in an absolute value changes to a positive, and then we're gonna have over root five, like that. Now you might get to this point, and you might ask yourself, wait, how is this the same as either of those, and it actually is the same. If you plug this into your calculator, you plug these into your calculator, the decimal is gonna be the same. It's gonna be like seven point something, right, for both of them. So how does this, how can we make this the same as this? Like if we were using this formula to check our answers and we get this, how can we ensure? Well, we could use a calculator to get both decimals and see that they're the same. But if we didn't have a calculator, this 20 over root five, we would rationalize the denominator as I've shown in previous examples. So we take this multiplied by root five over root five, which would give us 20 root five, and then root five times root five would give us five, and then 20 over five would give us four, and then the root five stays. So four root five, four root five. That's how we can go from here to here. Both of them are the same thing. Right, so overall, final answer, four root five, that is the shortest distance.